the skin. So in this formulation, the emulsifying wax that was used was prepared prior to the preparation of the paste. And there was also a change in the ingredient where we changed the yellow some paraffin, white some paraffin as was First, let us collect our ingredients. Who? Let's go. Collect one, collect two, collect three, collect four, collect five and six. Uh huh. There are six ingredients in our basket now. Let's put this on the bench. Now, let's look properly on how to wash our apparatus before we start our experiment. Firstly, wipe off the table by using a piece of cloth. Secondly, place a piece of wood block under the Bunsen burner as a step of precaution to avoid burnt mark on the table surface. Then, place the tripod stand on the Bunsen burner and put a bowl containing water as our water bath. Next, take the glass slab and wipe the surface by using a piece of cloth to remove the debris. Do not forget to take the pellet knife as we would use this to navigate our product during the experiment. Take also the mortar and vessel, glass rod, an evaporating dish, measuring cylinder, and a 250ml beaker and organize all of them on the table. Now we are ready to run our experiment. The ingredients that we use to prepare this paste are zinc oxide, kota, starch, white soft paraffin, cetramide, and cytosterol alcohol. First, turn on the Bunsen burner to heat the water bar. Adjust the intensity of the flame to the preferred one. Okay, now... 0.25 gram of centrimide and 2.25 gram of cetosterol alcohol has been correctly measured. So let us see how Kathy does the preparation. Oh. Yay, it's finally my turn. Let me transfer 2.25 gram of cetosterol alcohol into the crucible on the water bath first. Ayah, why so long one? Finally, it's time to add in 0.25 gram of centrimide. Yee! Sticky cold, huh? Uh, in this case, we should use glass lined paper or plastic instead. Because if you use weighing paper instead, the paper will absorb the moisture content in the sticky cold tar. So, and thus, we cannot, we cannot transfer all the cold tar from the paper into the evaporating dish later. So, we will lose some of the compound there. So, 3 grams of coal tar has been correctly measured. And next, paraffin wax is coming. 22.5 grams of paraffin wax is correctly measured. Now's the time to prepare the paste. To start the preparation, coal tar and whites of paraffin were put into an evaporating dish on the water bath to be melted. Always have a lookout on the temperature of the water bath so that it does not exceed the range or the ingredients would burn. As the white soft paraffin is in a large amount, put in half of it first and put the rest later. Now lastly for my part. So now I'm going to measure starch. In this experiment, we are using 19 grams of starch. By the way, should we use plastic spoon or metal spatula in this case? Since the mess is so big, so use plastic spoon instead because it has a it can it can it can take a larger mess per time. Yeah. Let's go. Hey Kathy, help me add the powder inside the mortar. 332 332 two, Here comes the titrations. Yeah, so you can see I'm titrating the zinc oxide and uh, and the starch. So I mix the zinc oxide first, then I mix with the starch. But there is a technique of adding this starch. 
we cannot just add the starch, the 19 gram of starch all the way into the mortar because it will be unevenly distributed. So we use a technique called geometrical dilution where if I put 3 gram of zinc oxide, I should put 3 gram of starch first as the first dilution so that I titrate it until they are evenly distributed and next because 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 gram so now I add another 6 gram of starch to become 12 gram of mixture so I titrate, 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 titrate and now it's 12 gram so I add the remaining starch into the compound and it becomes the overall mixture yeah, and now, finish! Now has come the time to mix the semi-solid ingredients and the powder together to form the paste. The method used is lavigation, which has made it so much easier to combine all the ingredients. The melted whites of paraffin and kulta was first poured onto the glass lab, followed by small amounts of powder. Remember to put small amounts of the powder or everything will be flying off during the lavigation process. Once all the solid and semi-solid ingredients have been mixed, your paste is now ready. Measure 30 gram of the paste and put it into the jar. Use the spatula to tidy, to tidy the sides of the jar and make sure it doesn't look messed up in there. Then it is ready to be capped and labeled. Now I am typing the red label. We will be using red paper instead because it is for external use. This medication is applied as directed when necessary. We must also store this medication in a cool and dry place and any remaining it should be discarded after 3 months. Okay now let's go through a self-reflection session. There are several mistakes that we should not be committed in this experiment. Firstly, we should handle the flames properly by lighting up the lighter before opening the gas. It's because if you open the gas first and then we use the we ignite the lighter, it will cause a big flame which might injure other people. And besides, we should have proper care when dealing with hot object. It's a good idea to wear wool glove, wool gloves. Yeah. So we should not handle hot object by using bare hand because it might burn our skin. And the third one is a big no to roll up your sleeve as the lab coat should be covered fully in order to prevent any injury or any chemical harms here. And lastly, to overcome the problem of not being able to transfer sticky substance fully to, uh, from the glass line paper, I suggest that we, should can, we can strictly measure the mass of the coal tar in the evaporating dish. Instead, by just tearing the empty evaporating dish as zero. Yeah. 